concept of intercession is one of the most controversial issues within Islam. The Shia school of thought and also other schools within the Sunni traditions believe in the concept of intercession, while others like Wahhabism refute it and reject the fact of intercession and claim that every person who believes in it is not a, is not a Muslim. The Quran addresses this issue in various manners. This is why my esteemed guest and I have dedicated tonight's episode to examine the concept of intercession within the Holy Quran. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the third episode of Life from Karbala, Ramadan series with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Tonight uh, is a very special night. It's the third night of Ramadan and it is the night prior to Friday, Lil to Jum'ah, and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, uh, Karbala is packed. However, I would like to introduce my guest uh, who has joined me once again, Sayyid Hussain Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. I would, like to, uh, I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you on this uh, very special night. Likewise. Uh, the first uh, Thursday night in, in Ramadan. It's a very special night, and uh, Karbala is packed uh, with pilgrims. Alhamdulillah. Uh, in the previous episode, in yesterday's episode, we discussed Imama within the Holy Quran and discussed the role of the Imam and uh, what are his duties. Uh, however, we continuously see the emphasis uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah and the Ahlul Bayt place upon intercession. And uh, we see that in the Holy Quran and the traditions of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Uh, the question is, is that uh, when we see this emphasis and when we see some people who try to refute the concept of intercession, misconceptions begin to raise and issues begin to raise. And this causes Muslims to, you know, to separate from one another. First, let's break it down and see what intercession is and why is it important. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين um, As you mentioned that due to the concept of الشفاعة or intercession mm-hmm. followers of أهل البيت have been attacked have been attacked for centuries in believing in the concept of شفاعة in asking their imams to intercede on their behalf um, uh, for tawassul, for you know, go, for visiting the graves of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa and the imams, and asking them to intercede on their behalf. Now, uh, before we see what the Quran exactly says about shafa'ah, let's first let's first understand what is shafa'ah. Yes. Be- to do that. Because perhaps we're arguing over nothing. Yeah. If we define shafa'a, perhaps we'll discover that we both agree on the, same, sh- yeah. on, on the same topic. Yeah. The shafa'a is legitimate, it's acceptable, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with it. What is shafa'a? Shafa'a is to intercede on behalf of someone. Mm-hmm. This could be uh, in, in your everyday life. Yes. You intercede with a judge, someone is in trouble, mm-hmm. you go and you intercede and you say, you're a friend of the judges. Mm-hmm. You go and you tell them that, you know, for my sake, mm-hmm. let this person go. Yeah. Or reduce the amount of years in jail. Mm-hmm. Or reduce the, the, uh, the, the, the punishment. This is a form of intercession. When you go and you intercede on behalf of someone, for that person's benefit, mm-hmm. to reduce punishment, to forgive a crime, mm-hmm. to forgive a sin, to elevate that person's status, this is called shafa'ah. You're a business owner and you have people abl- applying for your business as employees. Mm-hmm. You ask for a recommendation letter. I write a person a recommendation letter. Mm-hmm. You know me, we're good friends. Yes. You trust me. You trust my, uh, you know, sense of judgment. Mm -hmm. If I write you a person, if I write you a recommendation letter, you will accept that person. You will hire that person. This is this is a Mm shafa'ah. That recommendation letter is considered shafa'ah. You will hire that person 
based upon my recommendation. Mm -hmm. This is Shafa'ah. So is it safe to say that Shafa'ah is some sort of assistance? It is a form of assistance. Mm -hmm. Let's come to Shafa'ah in the religious sense. Mm -hmm. It is when a group of people, sometimes it's not people, sometimes it's a place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a thing, like a book, intercedes on the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive some people because of that intercession, because so-and-so interceded, or because a specific place interceded, like a masjid. Yes. A mosque will intercede on the Day of Judgment and will speak on the Day of Judgment. And that's not far-fetched because the Quran says, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهَدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا قَالُوا أَنْطَقَنَا اللَّهِ الَّذِي أَنْطَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Our skin, our bodily organs will speak on the Day of Judgment. So it's not far-fetched that a mosque will speak and will say that this person prayed inside me five times, ten times, twenty times. The Qur'an will intercede on the Day of Judgment. Yes. Will say this person read me so and so many times. It will intercede. And some people will intercede. Prophets, angels, and we believe the Imams will also intercede on the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. Meaning that they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive this person or to reduce his punishment or to elevate his status. This person's already in paradise. This person who has the right or privilege of interceding will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate this person's status in heaven mm -hmm. or decrease his punishment and hellfire and so on and so forth. This is intercession. This is called shafa'ah. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever we say might just be claims. So if you want to make it into, uh, you know, bring accuracy into the topic and make it 100% certain, we have to use evidences and, and you know, and the best evidence is uh, the Holy Word. The Holy Quran, Quran, because everyone agrees upon the Quran. Definitely. We see that the Quran addresses uh, the issue or the concept of intercession in three matters. This is what I've, I've gathered. Maybe you have more. Uh, first, there are verses which negate intercession. We see that in chapter 2, verse 123 and verse 254. The second uh, matter is that there are verses which say that intercession is exclusively domain by Allah or of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah is the one who can intercede for, for humanity. And we see that in chapter 6, verse 70 and chapter 39, verse 44 and the third we see that there are various verses uh, which take priority over the first and the second manners where the first is about the one who negates intercession and the only Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these two verses uh, give certain people who have been selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ability to intercede for you know for humanity or specific individuals now, what does the Qur'an have to say? I know we brought a, a couple of verses. I didn't mention the verses, but I brought numbers of the verses. Some verses, when we do look at this, I mean, the first one negates, the second one says only Allah can intercede, and the third ones, they say that Allah can, you know, give people the ability to intercede. So doesn't that, you know, increase confliction between mm. the verses and between, mm. you know, Islam. So how 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 does how is that, and what is how how do we, how do we resolve the issue? Okay. Um, the verses regarding shafa'a uh, in the Quran are quite various, mm -hmm. as you as you said. We have maybe more than twenty five verses on shafa'a. Mm -hmm. They come specifically in the word shafa'a, yashfa', yashfa'un. Uh, and the various roots of this word. Mm -hmm. If you look it up, you will see that this word, with it, the, the, the root word, with the other forms of usage, mm -hmm. there's at least a minimum of 25 verses that have mentioned shafa'ah, mm -hmm. intercession. From my understanding of these verses, mm -hmm. I see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some verses, 
says there is absolutely no intercession. Yes, and we do see that. And there are no intercessors. Mm -hmm. For example, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 48. Mm -hmm. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعًا Be pious, fear, fear the day in which one person cannot help another and intercession will not be accepted, period. Wow. There's no exceptions in this verse. It's a general law. There's no shafa'ah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 123, the one that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ عَنْ نَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا تَنْفَعُهَا شَفَاعَةٌ wow. Fear the day in which any intercession will not benefit it. No intercession will benefit it. Mm -hmm. Meaning, no matter who intercedes, it will not benefit them. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 254. Mm -hmm. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ O you who believe, Give from what we've given you. من قبل أن يأتي يوم Before that day comes, which has يوم لا بيع فيه A day in which there's no buying and selling. ولا خلة And there's no friendship. ولا شفاعة And there's no intercession. والكافرون هم الظالمون And the disbelievers are the oppressors. Surah Al-Qiyamah, verse 48. فما تنفعهم شفاعة الشافعين The evildoers. Mm -hmm. That the intercession of the intercessors will not benefit them. Mm -hmm. Meaning, intercession is no good. Even if there were to be intercessors, yeah. their intercession is meaningless. Surah Al-An'am, verse 51. Mm -hmm. وَأَنذِرْ بِهِ الَّذِينَ يَخَافُونَ أَن يُحْشَرُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ they have no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an intercessor. There's no one else. No one else. La wali wala shafi'. There's no friend to take care of them. So, and there's no intercessor to take care of them. Wow. So we do see the confusion. I mean you just mentioned verses where it says there's absolutely no, no intercession, intercession under the now judgment. It's Allah. Huh. Here in this verse, Laysa Luhum Mindunihi Waliyun wala shafi'. That there is an intercessor. The intercessor is Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else. The verse doesn't mention anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyib. There's other verses. There's other verses. What I understand from these verses is that the general law mm -hmm. on the Day of Judgment is that no one can help you. You'll come by yourself. You'll be resurrected by yourself. And the only thing that can help you on the Day of Judgment is your actions. What have you put forth, mm -hmm. forward? Your salah, your fasting, your sadaqah, your hajj, your, your zakat. You, you helped an orphan, you helped your parents, you respected someone, your ziyar. It's only your actions. This is the general law. That there is nothing that can save you on the Day of Judgment. Nothing that can help you other than your actions. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, in Arabic we say, Al -amtal tudrab wala tuqas. Wala tuqas, yeah. We give an example, but examples, you know, remain that not very yeah. clear. You know, there's some uh, game, game shows on yeah. TV. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Yes. You're asked questions. The first thing that can help you on this show is what? Your, your, brain. your knowledge, your brain, yeah, your, knowledge, your yeah. memorization skills. Mm -hmm. How much you've memorized? By default, if you don't have knowledge, you should not go on that show, yeah. right? However, even if you have knowledge, but sometimes you forget, yeah. you get to ask someone for help. Yes. There's a help. Uh, there's assistance, yeah. There's an assistance, you, can, you, get, you get to you call someone. Call someone, ask the, the audience. Uh, or ask the audience. Yeah. But by default, it has to be your knowledge. What you know, what you've mm -hmm. memorized, how much information and knowledge you you have, mm -hmm. you're qualified to go on that show. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us that number one, the first criteria is your actions. What have you brought with you on the Day of Judgment? Wow. This is the general law. Yeah, so, so don't come to the, to the Day of Judgment thinking that yes. someone will help you, 
this person will help you, your mother, your father, this prophet, that imam. No. Bring your actions. Yeah. You don't have actions, good luck. No one can help you. No one can help you. Wow. If you don't have good deeds, you're in big trouble. This is the general law. Now after stating this law, this general law, then the Quran comes and says, you know, there's some exceptions. And to every rule, there's what? There's an exception. Yeah. To every rule, there's an exception. مَا مِنْ عَامٍ إِلَّا وَقَدْ خُصْ The exception is that some people will have the right to intercede. Mm-hmm. And some people will have the right to receive intercession. Who will see later on? But let's first prove that some people have the right to intercede. Because these people are special. Not because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because of who they are. No, by yeah. merit. Yes. By their actions, by yes. their qualities. These people are special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the right to intercede. Does this conflict? It does. You still see that there's a conflict? I mean, well, the thing is, is that uh, first we said that there's action. But yes. So is action the only solution to that? You see, it's just like um, when you go and propose to a lady. Yes. You have to have a couple of criteria. Yes. But there is one criteria more important than others. Yes. The first criteria is faith, for example. For some families, you have to be a a Muslim, a mu'min. If you have this criteria and you have others, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the number one criteria, you're out. You're not even welcome. The first criteria is actions Mm -hmm. on the Day of Judgment. Now, after having actions, some people, they need a boost. Yes. They need the word that you used, assistance. Yes. There's a difference between someone who comes on the Day of Judgment and has absolutely no good deeds. This person has no room for shafa'ah. And another person who comes with good deeds, but he needs a boost. Yes. He needs a form of assistance. A shafa'ah is for this person. Okay, so there. there or is. this person has good deeds, but has some bad deeds as well. Mm-hmm. It's not that he came, you know, empty handed whatsoever. He has good deeds, but at the same time, he has bad deeds. Mm-hmm. Mistakenly. Here he receives shafa'ah. The Quran says in Surah Maryam, verse 87, La yamlikuna shafa'ah. Mm-hmm. He who has made a vow with the All-Merciful has the right to intercede. Surah Taha, verse 109. Mm-hmm. No intercession will be accepted except. You see, the general law is that intercessions are not accepted. You're rejected, you're rejected, you're rejected, you're rejected. These are a group of people who have that Allah has chosen, has chosen because of their merits, because of their qualities, as a reward for what they've done. Allah says, "You know what? One of your rewards is that you get to inter- you get to intercede on the day of judgment." Allah has the right to uh, Allah has the right to give permission. Mm-hmm. Allah is the one who says on the day of judgment, "There is no intercession." He's the one that says, yes, I've made this law. There are no intercessions Mm -hmm. except for a few. For those that I've given them the right to intercede. So he he makes an exception. And another verse, Surah Sabah, Surah Sabah, verse 23. Mm -hmm. illa liman Intercessions will not be accepted unless a person is given permission. Uh, Surah Zukhruf. Uh, verse 86 wow. They will not have They will not own intercession They will not have the right to intercession Unless they witness to the truth Yes. Allah will tell them fine Ayatul Kursi We're all very familiar with Yes. Surah Al-Baqarah, yes. verse 
من ذا الذي يشفع عنده الا باذنه who dares intercede من ذا الذي يشفع عنده who will intercede الا باذنه if you have permission you can intercede if you don't have permission you can't intercede so it's a matter of do you have permission to intercede or yeah. you don't have permission to, inter to intercede mm -hmm. uh, are you allowed to receive intercession or you're not allowed to receive intercession so that negation mm -hmm. even though it's general yes but every general law has what an exception an exception, an exception. I don't know do we have time before the break to go into details on who receives intercession or who doesn't receive intercession? Um, I, don't know. I think we have a couple of more minutes, so I think we have uh, that. But uh, now I know why it's 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 confusing and it's very controversial uh, amongst the traditions. Uh, but the thing is, uh, is that when we do come to understand that intercession is, uh, you know, only to Allah, and then we have to uh, the ones who are granted permission by Allah we do see that isn't it confusing i mean why is allah stating in the first that no intercession mm. and then you know allah intercedes and then he grants permission good point when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says intercessions for me mm -hmm. and then he says some people illa man irtada aw illa man udhina lah illa bi idhna wa la yashfa'una illa li man irtada Mm -hmm. He's making exceptions. At the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can intercede or gives that right to others. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's possible. There's verses that speak about taking life. Yes. In some verses in the Quran, Allah says, Allahu yatawaffal anfusa hina mawtiha. Allah takes away lives. Mm -hmm. And another verse says, and another verse he says, Say that the one who takes your life is the angel of death. Is this a conflict? No. Because when the angel of death, Allah first says, I take away your lives. And another verse says, the angel of death takes away your life. Is there a conflict? No. Because when the angel of life is taking life and bringing death to a person, he's doing it with, with the authority of whom? Allah. Allah's so what I understand from that is that they're intertwined through the command of Allah. Ahsan. Perfect. So when Allah mm -hmm. SWT, uh, when He allows someone to intercede, Allah is giving him the permission to intercede. Okay. So Allah is, in reality, Allah is interceding. Is because Allah He's giving permission to, for someone to yes. intercede. Yes, that's perfect. Uh, so Sayyidina, we'll go into a short break inshallah, uh, but come back to this discussion. Uh, so respected viewers will be presented with an overview. Uh, of tonight's episode as well as live footages from the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein peace be upon him on Thursday night so to the break we'll be back shortly
respected viewers, we are now presented with uh, live footages from inside the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It's Thursday night prior to Friday, and uh, as Ahl Bayt alayhi salam and the traditions uh, from our beloved Imams, they state that whoever uh, sends his salutations and sends his blessings upon Imam Hussein on Thursday night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him paradise and will grant him the ability to come and uh, visit his beloved Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, but uh, so join us as we send our salutations to our beloved master Imam al Hussein, peace be upon him. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al arwah alati halat bi thinaik. Alaikum minni jami'an salamu allahi abadan ma baqeet wa baqiya al laylu wa al nahar. Assalamu ala al Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein wa ala awlad al Hussein wa ala ashab al Hussein. Jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected viewers, welcome back. Hope you, inshallah, enjoyed uh, those live footages from inside the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussain Al Islam. As you can see, uh, it's very packed, and Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Karbala is flourishing uh, through its pilgrims and through its zuwar. Uh, and uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, what better place to be other than the Holy Land of Karbala on a night like this, the third night of Ramadan, uh, the night prior to Friday? But back to the discussion with my dear guest. Uh, Sayyid Hussain Qazmini, welcome back. How are you, Sayyidina? Allah yaqfadkum. Allah yaqfadkum, inshaAllah. Before the break, uh, we cleared up uh, some confusion regarding uh, the concept of intercession and the issue regarding it. And, uh, you know, some verses we stated that no intercession is allowed. Then we said Allah is the one who intercedes. And then Allah, uh, you know, gives or grants permission to some individuals um, with, you know, special characteristics and merits who they can intercede as well but all of that comes under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, but some state that Prophet Muhammad and the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them have absolute power of intercession is it not you know that characteristic only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how does Prophet Muhammad possess that um, we believe that Allah Azza wa Jal has given Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the right to shafa'ah. Mm -hmm. And, and th this is clear in the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. And so too to the Imams. Really? In fact, in fact, some, some might ask the opposite question. Yes. That what's the point of shafa'ah? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us to have a direct relationship with Him without, without middle men. Yes. Allah SWT says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجُبْ لَكُمْ He says, mm -hmm. call on me and I'll answer you. There's no middle Not man. Not call on someone else. Not call on someone else. Don't, don't put a middle man between yes. me and you. Fine. That's true. Allah SWT, we could call on him directly. Mm -hmm. No one says you can't. Yes. Call on Allah directly. However, sometimes some human beings, they want to boost. Yes. They want to make sure that their dua, their prayer is not rejected. Yes. Perhaps Allah might reject me for my sins. Yes. And He has every right to do so. For my sins, for my misbehavior, misbehavior hypocrisy, lack of, lack of sincerity, so on and so forth. As human beings, yes. He has the right to reject us. Yes. But when I come and I put forward Rasulullah 
when I put forward Imam Ali Ali Will he reject me? Will he, will he say no? Most, Most likely, likely not. not. Yes. Because that shafa'a will give me a boost. Mm -hmm. That's the point of shafa'a. Otherwise, I could go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And have the possibility of being rejected. And have the possibility of being rejected. And yes. Allah has the right. No one Definitely. could say that, Definitely. no, that's uh, injustice. No. If, I'm, if I misbehave, if I oppress Allah, if I sin, if I transgress, Allah has every right to we're, turn me down. We're being injustice. We're, we're the one committing the inju injustice. Yeah. Now, there's a verse in the Quran mm -hmm. that's the biggest proof of shafa, ah, specifically regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ أَظَّلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا Those who oppress themselves, Yesterday we talked about self. We talked about self oppression, meaning those who committed sins. Mm -hmm. Because when you commit a sin, you're oppressing yourself. Yes. Because you're exposing yourself to punishment. Fastaghfirullah. They kept. They come to you. First they oppress themselves. Jauka. They they come to you, Ya Rasulullah. They seek forgiveness. Fastaghfirullah. Wastaghfir lahum al Rasul. And Rasulullah asks Allah to forgive them. Why do they come to Rasulullah? They can go straight to Allah. They can go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask forgiveness from Allah. Yes. Because, but they know that it's a 50-50 mm -hmm. chance of being rejected and denied. Yes. But they know that if Rasulullah asks Allah to forgive them, Allah is not going to say no to Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. He might say no to them for their sins. But is Allah going to say no to Rasulullah? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمَ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجِدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّامًا رَحِيمًا yeah. They will find that Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. All merciful yes. Is there any clearer proof that shafa'a exists? This is shafa'a. This is Rasulullah interceding on behalf of a group of sinners. Mm -hmm. Another proof, more proof. The sons of Ya'qub alayhi salam. The sons yes. of Ya'qub, Prophet Ya'qub. After the pro their father discovered what they had done, that they had thrown Yusuf السلام, into a well, they hadn't, you know, they, they, they confessed, mm -hmm. they came clean. To Yaqub, they, ca they came and told him, قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا اسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا اسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا اسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا meaning what? Forgive us? No. Ask, اسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا means ask Allah to forgive us. Ask Allah to forgive us. Forgive this us. is shafa'a. He didn't say no. This is shirk. This is not allowed. This is useless. Ask Allah directly. What did he say? Qala sawfa astaghfiru lakum. I will, I shall ask Allah to forgive you. This is shafa'a. This is shafa'a. This is clear proof of shafa'a in the mm -hmm. Quran. Well, now I would like to move to a different yet related topic to intercession. Uh, this also raises misconception, uh, you know, us Shia, alhamdulillah, I mean, we hold, we hold uh, a firm basis regarding uh, the traditions and the commands uh, that we have received through the al Bayt Ali Islam uh, regarding intercession, but other schools of thought refute and reject the matter of, of intercession, and they bring forth evidence from the Holy Quran, the ones that you've mentioned, but there's another verse which is chapter 9 verse 114 uh, regarding Ibrahim alayhi salam he says uh, God's beloved servant could not intercede on behalf of his father who was a pagan so is, isn't he a prophet and he couldn't intercede so they said through this you can't uh, intercession is is not allowed in Islam mm -hmm. we say Nuh who could not intercede on behalf of his son when he uh, was about to drown he says oh God this is my son he says no, you know. Perfect. Perfect example. And then Prophet Muhammad could Muhammad not intercede on behalf of his uncle, Abu Lahab, in chapter uh, 111, verse 1 to 3, or relatives in chapter 9, verse 80. So the question that, that, that is raised right now, are there any traditions from the Sunni school of thought regarding intercession? Yes, there is. But to answer you on these verses, mm -hmm. we stated that shafa'a is for those that need a boost, that have good deeds, mm -hmm. 
and have some bad deeds, yes. but they need a boost. The examples that you mentioned, Ibrahim could not intercede for his uncle. Yes, no, we, for his father or uncle? His uncle. His uncle. Not his father. We believe that uh, the person in the Quran, قَالَ سَوْفَ أَسْتَغْفَرُ لَكَ or uh, I believe, um, anyhow, it's, uh, naam. it's not his father, it's his uncle. Okay. And that's another topic. That's another topic, Even yes. though he uses the word ab, because we believe that the fathers of prophets are monotheists. They cannot yes, be polytheists. Definitely. Anyhow, his uncle was an idol worshiper. Yes. He had no good deeds. So in order to intercede for him, to intercede for him for what? He hasn't done any good deeds. Yes. That would be unjust to intercede for a person just because he's an uncle or just because he's a nephew or just because he's a son that, that's not a merit or for Nuh to intercede on behalf of his son why? his son was a kafir he willingly rejected definitely Nuh cannot intercede on behalf of his son mm -hmm. because his son had no good deeds he lacked faith we said in the beginning that shafa'ah is for those that have good deeds, that have faith, but at the same time, they slacked off a little bit. Mm -hmm. They slacked off here, they slacked off there, they missed maybe a salah here, a salah there. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But this is the idea that I have of shafa'a according to the Quran and the hadith. Those who, they have some deeds, but they need a boost. Mm -hmm. They need assistance. Abu Lahab, the uncle of Rasulullah, he, he only had bad deeds. He didn't have a single good deed. For Rasulullah to intercede. Now, intercession in Sunni books of hadith. It's very clear. There's lots of narrations. I'm only going to mention one or two. Mm -hmm. Two or three. في سنن النسائي عن جابر بن عبد الله قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وعطيت خمسا لم يعطهن يعطهن أحد قبلي. I was given five things that no one before me was given. وأعطيت الشفاعة وَلَمْ يُعْطَ نَبِيٌّ قَبْلِي I was given intercession and no prophet before me was given intercession. This is in Sunan al-Nisa'i. Yes. I also in Sunan al-Nisa'i قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَمَنْ سَأَلَ لِيَ الْوَسِيلَةِ حَلَّتْ لَهُ الشَّفَاعَةِ He who asks for my wasila, for my yes. help, he will receive my intercession. Another hadith قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ شَفَاعَتِي لِأَهْلِ الْكَبَائِرَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي لِأَهْلِ الْكَبَائِرَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي My intercession is for those that perform the big sins in my ummah. I will intercede on their behalf. I will get them. I will get them back. In السيرة النبوية by Al-Halabi yeah. This is a Sunni yes. source. أَنَّ أَبَا بَكْرَ أَقْبَلَ إِلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ بَعْدَ وَفَاتِهِ Abu Bakr came to the corpse of Rasulullah after his death. He removed the, the cloth over his mm -hmm. face and he threw himself on the body of Rasulullah. May my mother and father be a sacrifice for you. Mention us, remember us remember. with your Lord. What is this? Shafa'ah. Yes. Abu Bakr is asking Rasulullah to perform Intercession. intercession remember us don't forget us with Allah this is, this is just a, a couple of drops from yes. the ocean of narrations mentioned in Sunni books of hadith mm -hmm. so that also somewhat uh, does you know answer the question is that since they have that within their books uh, why is it within their schools of thought the idea of intercession is rejected that it's either up to them or you can answer I mean it's it's up to you because somewhat it's it's confusing because when you have two schools of thought who believe in the same prophet and who believe in the same book they tend to you know because the verses we mentioned aren't just you know cherry picked from the Quran no they're actually verses who state which state that intercession plays a very significant role within, you know, the, the Muslims, within the Muslims' life. And as you mentioned, you know, some people do have mistakes, yet they need a little boost. Now you've mentioned that the, the one with Abu Bakr who says, remember us with, with your Lord. Remember us with your Lord, that means that on the day of judgment, 
after everyone's uh, everyone dies, uh, Rasulullah remembers him. I don't know if he does or not, but uh, remembers the Muslims uh, on the day of uh, judgment. The question is, is that who gets to intercede on the day of judgment? The prophets, the imams, regular people, pious. Who gets to intercede? The verse, the verses on the Quran, they say that you know. We, we, we read some of the verses mm -hmm. that no one has the right to intercession except he whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given permission. Just off the bat, we could assume who has the right to, per who will be given permission? Prophets. I mean, if, if prophets are not given the right to intercede, who will be given the right to intercede? Mm -hmm. Imams. Our imams. Our imams are not less significant than the prophets in their deeds, in their spirituality, in their righteousness, in their akhlaq, as we mentioned yesterday, in their worship, they're not less significant mm -hmm. than, than the prophets. So they too have the right to, um, to intercede. We have narrations that say angels will enter, they have the right to intercede. Mm -hmm. Scholars, al-ulama, they have the right to intercede. Martyrs, al-shuhada, they have the right to intercede. The Quran has the right to intercede. The masjid, has the right to intercede. This is all within the Quran? No, these are narrations. Oh, narrations. These are narrations and hadith. Mm -hmm. uh, some places of worship and our, you know, uh, from the Sunni school of thought, they agree upon this. If you see them, you know, they have a, they have a practice when they in, pray in one place, the next salah they'll pray somewhere else. The third salah they'll get up and pray somewhere else. This wow. is good. This is a good practice. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have narrations that say the place where you pray will intercede for you on the day of judgment. Wow. Will come and say that this person prayed on top of me. So the, the more places you pray on, the more places will intercede, intercede on the day of judgment. Wow. And they agree upon this as well in the Sunni school of thought. Now, if a place intercedes, if a copy of the Quran intercedes, if a if a mosque, a building intercedes, an infallible imam cannot intercede. And we'll talk about infallibility tomorrow, inshallah. inshallah. An infallible imam, a sinless imam, a righteous person. If a scholar can intercede, mm -hmm. are the imams not scholars? All schools of thought agree that Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq was a scholar. A scholar yeah. His father, Imam al-Baqir, was a scholar. Musa ibn Ja'far was a scholar. According to their books of Rajal mm -hmm. on biographies. They're scholars. If you agree that scholars intercede, our Imams also intercede. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's very beautifully said that uh, since any scholar can intercede, how can, you know, the Imams or the Prophets not intercede? Uh, so, we do see that whoever is granted permission, so infallible or not infallible, still they can intercede. Yes. Yeah. So, that somewhat removes uh, the confusion, the, the conflict within. Uh, but earlier in the episode, we mentioned uh, actions and the importance of actions. Yes, I know we have a couple of, I think, five or six minutes left. Uh, since that we do, oh, three minutes? Okay. Uh, since that we have the actions, they cut me off. But yeah, since that we have the actions uh, and intercession, if intercession plays that role, What's the role of actions? Ah, this is a very important question. And this is where some people, they, uh, you know, they, they fall into a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. They think that as long as there's shafa'ah, no there's no action. need for actions. I'll depend on Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. I'll depend on Imam Ali. I'll as depend long as on, I love him. as long as I have love for the Ahlul Bayt, I'll depend on Imam Al Hussein. There is shafa'ah, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's actions. Yes. We said in the beginning that intercession comes as a boost as long as you have actions. If you don't have actions, who said you'll get shafa'ah? Who said you'll get shafa'ah? There's some people they think they could come on the Day of Judgment empty-handed, absolutely empty-handed, and they'll receive the shafa'ah of Imam Hussein. Who said? Imam Sadiq salam on his deathbed, he gathered his family members and he said, I want to say one last statement. I want everyone to hear. And those of you that are here, say it to the, one, to the ones that are not here. Wow. 
our intercession will not reach someone who doesn't take his salah seriously. is not someone who doesn't pray whatsoever. No, he prays, but he doesn't take salah seriously. Wow. Instead of praying on time, he delays salah an hour, two hours, three hours. This person will not receive intercession. Let alone someone who doesn't pray whatsoever. This wow. person will not receive intercession. This hadith by itself tells us that actions are a must. You cannot replace actions with shafa'a. Wow. Shafa'a was not meant to replace actions. Do good deeds. Come, do the best of deeds. And intercession will help. Look at our top scholars in maraja. They were almost infallible. You don't see a single scholar, you know, that commits sins and relies on intercession yeah. and shafa'a. And says, you know what, I have enough. Uh, I'll have the shafa'a of the Ahl Bayt. No, they came with good deeds. And inshallah, they hope to receive some shafa'a on the day of judgment. Inshallah. And that's perfect to, uh, uh, perfect statement to end uh, tonight's episode is that actions is more important than intercession because if you don't have actions, intercession doesn't play You'll be like the son of Nuh. Perfect. Or, or the uncle of, of uh, Prophet Abraham. Thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you for your dedication. Respected viewers, Allah thank you very much for joining us. Uh, in tonight's episode, we have cleared up the confusion regarding uh, intercession, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone on a night like this, the night prior to Friday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you weren't able to view today's episode or yesterday or the day prior, uh, you can check out our uh, YouTube page at Imam Hussein 3 TV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.